Usually when thinking of a virus, you think of a sickness going around. But the scientific way to describe a virus is a microscopic organism containing genetic material. The parts of a virus are the capsid, which is a protein, the genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and the envelope, which is a lipid. These non-living things depend on other cells in order to survive. They infect host cells to, to reproduce by going through either the lytic or the lysogenic cycle. Pretty cool, right? They have genetic variation within all viruses. They have different types of viruses, including DNA phages of the T-series, temperate phages, small DNA phages, and RNA phages. There are two cycles that control the spread of viruses, the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. Here, we will examine a model scale 20 million times larger than a real-life viral infection in order to better understand both of these cycles. This is a cell casually going about its life cycle without a care in the world. Then, suddenly, here comes a phage. It attaches to the cell and injects its genetic material. Now our original cell here has the burden of becoming a host cell. Throughout the rest of the cycle, the host cell's genetic material breaks up, and with the genetic material from the phage, new genetic material, or a bacteriophage, is created. It's an invasion of the virions. Finally, the cell lyses bursting open and releasing the new virions that will now spread to infect other unsuspecting cells. Look, here is another cell. Oh no, another phage! As the phage injects the genetic material into the cell, it combines with the genetic material of the new host cell. Then, replication occurs which doubles the mixture of genetic material. This one cell then splits into two, each with one set of combined genetic material. These two cells are in for a treat because they both enter the lytic cycle to create more phages. Look at them. Both cycles at once. It looks like they won the virus lottery. Viruses are not all the same. They're all unique, just like humans. Whether it's recombination, mutation, or reassortment, viruses create diversity. Depending on what kind of genetic material is in the virus, the ways for genetic variation will be different. For RNA, we have higher rates of mutation than in our DNA because DNA has polymerases that go back and check the work. Both can be affected by reassortment and recombination, but are more common in segmented genes. In addition, selection plays a part in genetic variation through competition. Survival of the fittest is very important in viruses, depending on their ability to infect the host cell.